Before I begin, I want to make one clarification, or maybe we can call it a disclaimer. This is not really a Siyum Shas. What I mean when I say that, is because as, as you all know, the word Shas stands for Shisha Sidre. Shisha Sidre Mishnah. And there's only Gemara, Talmud Bavli, on the middle four, but on Zeraim, except for Brachot, there's only Mishnayot, and on Tarot, there's only Nido, which is the same I'm going to be making today. Um, all the other Mishnayot, there's a few Mesechtot in Kachim that I also, uh, that also don't have a Gemara on. All those Mishnayot I, I finished, I finished also the Mishnayot of Zeraim, but unfortunately I was not able yet to do uh, Seder Tarot, and I'm hoping in the near future to do that also. So, it's not technically a Siyum Shas, it's a Siyum Talmud Bavli. Okay? Um, I might interchange Shas with Talmud Bavli, just understand. I don't want anyone to think uh, something that's not true. It's only a Siyum on Talmud Bavli. Um, today is one of the happiest days of my life, but at the same time, one of the saddest days of my life. It is the happiest day of my life, for pretty obvious reasons, but I will nonetheless elaborate a little. My wedding day and the day that my children were born, my son's britot, bar and bat mitzvot that we celebrated together, they were all very joyous and special occasions. But I didn't really work for them or deserve them. They were gifts from Hashem. Kadosh Baruch Hu gave me a fantastic wife, great children, tremendous blessing. You know, the Zohar says, uses a phrase called Nama de Kisufa, bread of shame. When you get something for free, it takes away from the uh, joy because you didn't really work for it. So although those occasions were certainly very joyous, but they were not perfectly joyous because I didn't really deserve them. In fact, the Ramchal says that's why we have to do mitzvot in this world, for one simple reason, so that when God gives us reward in the world to come, we'll really feel that we deserve it because we did something for it. Today, however, I am celebrating the culmination of many years of hard work. I have had this goal to finish Shas for the last 25 years. Now, don't get scared, it doesn't take 25 years to finish Shas. Okay? I started my Shanabet year, which was after college. Came back Shanabet after college. And there in the yeshiva that I was in, BMT it was called, there was a Rav named Rav Yonatan Berger. And I um, actually lost touch with him. I don't know where he is right now, but uh, this Siyam is very much in his Zuchut. He was very into Bikiut. But actually, his story is interesting. He had been in the Rav Shir, in Rav Salavechik Shir. And after a while, he said, you know, this is beautiful, but you know, we're learning all this iyun and all this depth, but I don't know anything that Gemara says. I don't know Gemara. I don't know how to learn a piece of Gemara, simple piece of Gemara. So he decided to leave the Shir and just sit down and learn through Shas several times. And when I got to BMT, he was giving a Shir in several blot a day. And it was Elzman, and he was teaching Masechet Sukkah. Masechet Sukkah has about 64 blot, and we did three blot a day, and I finished it in all of Elzman. And I had such a feeling of accomplishment that I said, I want to do this. This is fantastic. I could do it. I saw that it was possible, and I, from that day on, I had this goal to finish Shas. That year, I learned over 400 blot of Gemara, and I was well on my way. I always say that, you know, after that, after learning 400 Blada Gemara, you could basically pick up any piece of Gemara and learn because you just need to know how Gemara works. And that's what he did. He has a very special, unique system of how to teach Gemara with markings, and I try to teach it a little bit to the guys in my shear. But then things started getting complicated. You know, it's easy when you're in yeshiva, and you have nothing else to do than learn Torah, it's pretty easy to, uh, to learn a 400 blot of Gemara a year. But after that, 
I got smicha, I had to take off time and learn halacha, which I'm not upset about. I love learning halacha, but I wasn't able to spend as much time learning Gemara. Got married, did graduate school, Baruch Hashem made aliyah, had children, um, teaching, making a parnasa, writing seven books. These kind of things took up a lot of my time. And, you know, Baruch Hashem, I think I was doing important things, but Lamaisa, my goal of finishing Shas, had to be put on the back burner for many years. <clears throat> 25 years is a quarter of a century. 25 years is most of my life. It's almost all of my adult life. <clears throat> a day didn't go by without me either doing something or at least yearning to accomplish this goal. So here we are, after 25 years of yearning and hoping, Baruch Hashem, I am here, I have, I have made it. So unlike the other simchas that I spoke about before, this is something I've really worked for, and that's why I say it's one of the happiest days of my life, that what I've worked for, finally I see, I see the fruits. So why the sadness? Why did I say it's one of the saddest days of my life? To put it very simply, I am sad because it took so long. Because I spent so much of my life on the basics. Learning Gemara, Shas Gemara, is the basics. Something that I and most Jewish children should finish by the age of 20. That way most of our lives can be spent delving deeper into the laws of the Torah, into the lessons that the Torah has to tell us. I am sad that I wasted my childhood and teenage years on insignificant pursuits. When I could have and should have been following Chazal's advice, Ben Chamesh Lemikra, Ben Eser Lemishnah, Ben Shlosh Yisrael Legemara, you're supposed to start learning Gemara after you've already finished all of Tanakh and all of Mishnayot by the age of 13. So you can imagine probably by the age of 18, maybe 20, you're already finished Shas. And then the rest of your life is going to be spent on Iyun, and on learning Lahalacha, and learning Shas over and over again, and constantly reviewing so that you can become a real true Talmud Chacham. I will never be a true Talmud Chacham because of this, because I started so late, and because it's taken so long for me to finish Shas, to finish the basics. My only consolation is that hopefully my children and my students will learn from my mistake and take full advantage of all the opportunities they have now to learn. And the time that they have now, because you'll never have this much time on your hands as you do now. Because afterwards, as I said before, parnasa, marriage, children, it's not as easy then as it is when you're free, when you have more time at this time in your life. This feeling of sadness is actually a Gemara that we just learned. The guys in my shir, we're doing the Gemara on, on uh, Hanukkah. And we saw there was a specific uh, halacha that Abaye heard when he was younger from Rabbi Yirmiya, and he didn't trust it. He didn't believe that it was really true, so he just ignored it. Mm -hmm. And then many years later, he learned from Rabbi Yochanan the same thing, and he said, ah, Rabbi Yochanan says it. Ah, now I'll accept it. And then it says but he was upset. And the Gemara says, why would he be upset? Like, okay, so he learned it. So he learned it a little later, but he still learned it. Like, who cares? The Gemara says, because of Girsata di Ankuta. Because now he learned it many years later, he doesn't have the same mind. His mind is not as strong as it was when he was younger. Had he learned it when he was younger, it would have been impressed on his mind. It would have been something that would have, been, that would have gone with him the rest of his life. When you learn something later in life, you don't understand it, you don't uh, remember it as well as when you learn it when you're young. So there's a basis for the fact that I'm sad. Because I didn't learn it when I was young, I don't have the girsa de Kuta. There's one more reason why my joy is not 100%, why it's tainted a little bit. They say in the name of Yisrael Salanter that it's easier to learn all of Shas than to fix one bad trait, one bad character trait. So, Baruch Hashem, I finished Shas, but have I fixed one bad character trait? I'm not sure. So, yeah, Baruch Hashem, I've done this, but there's so much more to go. The Ikar is that Talmud may be the day ma'aseh. Learning should bring you to action. So, I'm not yet the perfect person. No one is. And 
Therefore, it's not like I could, you know, sit back and uh, rest on my laurels. I finish us, that's it, you know. Life is over. There's still a lot more to, that I have to go. Besides, of course, in learning, there's so much more that I have to go. I started with a disclaimer that this is not really a siyum shas, siyum talmud bavli. There's a second disclaimer that I'd like to say. Even though I have completed talmud bavli, in no way, shape, or form am I claiming that I know it on any real level. I don't even know one mesechet properly, not even one daf properly. So you might ask, why did I waste my time, 25 years? Why did I waste all this time if I don't really know it? What's the point? Or putting it a different way, why should anybody who doesn't have a phenomenal memory waste his time and learn shas? If he doesn't remember it, what's the big deal? So I want to offer three answers to this question. Number one is, even though I don't remember all the shakla vitaria of Shas, I don't remember every machloket rishon, every machloket tanoim and amoraim, I don't remember the maskana of the gemaras, but there are things that even I, with my limited abilities, have gained and have retained from my learning of Shas. Now before I explain what those things that I've learned and that I've gained, I want to dwell for a moment on what I said with my limited abilities. You see, if one of the Rashi Yeshiva would be standing here now making a Siyum Shas, I think every one of you could rightfully say to yourselves, very nice, but what does that have to do with me? They're geniuses. They're a big Rashi Yeshiva. They, you know, they can learn all of Shas. But what does that have to do with me? I don't have their brain capacity. I don't have the same mind as they have. They can finish it, but I can't. I want you to understand that that's not me, okay? I'm not a genius, not even close. I bet you most of you guys got a better score on your SATs than I did. Um, I was just like you 30 years ago, okay? When I went to yeshiva for the first year, I was not in the top shear. Anyone could do it. If I could do it, almost every single person in this, in this room can do it also. And why was I able to do it? Because of hard work. Hard work and determination. If you have the hard work and you have the determination, you can do it also. So getting back to what I think are the things that I did gain. Number one, concepts. There is almost no concept that I come across now in my learning that I don't recognize, that I don't have a basic working knowledge of. Because I've gone through all of Shas. And you get to see after a while that the concepts repeat themselves over and over again, to Mantara and, and everything. They just repeat themselves. The first time you look at it, you're saying, like, I, I don't understand what's going on. When you do so many blot, you've, you've learned so much Gemara, it repeats itself so much that you would have to be practically brain dead, not to be able to retain the basic concepts that you need to know to learn, to learn. Secondly, reading comprehension. Even though I remember very little Baal Peh, I can confidently open up any Gemara and with a quick read-through, reminding myself of what, uh, you know, what the Sugi is about, I can, I can understand the Gemara. And I can pick up almost every, any Sefer out there except for maybe Kabbalistic Sefer Svarim, which I don't, you know, that's a new world. Um, I can pick up almost any Sefer and read it and understand it on a simply, certainly on a basic level. And therefore, even though I don't understand, I don't remember all of Shas, but I certainly have gained tremendously from learning Shas. I remember when I got to Daf Yomi, uh, Masechet Gitin, which was, I don't know, about two or three years ago, I had not seen Masechet Gitin in 20 years. I learned it 20 years ago with some yeshiva guy that I was learning with. And I remember it being very difficult but when, I, when it came time to, time to Daf Yomi, I was actually you know, a little nervous. Am I going to really understand, remember you know, what's going on? And Baruch Hashem, it came back to me 20 years later. And again, I don't have a phenomenal memory. It would be true for any of you. I always say that, you know, because Baruch who tests a person based on their level, right? Hashem is not going to give a really difficult test to someone who doesn't have the capabilities. So I don't believe that up in Shemayim I'm going to get a test Baal Peh, 
or a closed book test. My test is going to be an open book test. God knows what kind of mind he gave me. He knows that I can't possibly know all of Shas Baal Pet. So he's going to say, sure, here, open up a Gemara. Okay, open up the Ksuvah's Daf, I don't know, Kuf, and uh, let's start reading. And I hope I'll do pretty well. I hope I'll do pretty well because <coughs> Gemara I can learn. I can read a piece of Gemara. So you don't have to think that you have to know all of Shas Baal Peh in order for it to be worth it. In fact, one of the Gemaras that, uh, the Masechah that I'm making the Siyum on, Masechah Nida, the Gemara tells the famous, everyone knows this, that when a person is in, in the womb, he is taught Kala Torah Kula, and then when he's leaving the womb, an angel touches him over here, and he forgets all of his Torah. So the famous question is, so then why did he learn it to begin with? Why did, why did God or the angel bother teaching it to him when he's going to forget it eventually anyway? So one of the answers given is that it's, it's different. There's a difference between someone who's never seen anything before and someone who's seen it before but forgot it. Because then all you have to do is refresh your memory. And that's why we all have Torah in our memory somewhere, really, really far back. Because the angel taught us Kala Torah Kula in, our, in the womb. And therefore the same thing here. On a, on a more practical level, when you go through Shas and when you, learned all, you learn all of Gemara, so then, even though you haven't seen a Gemara for 20, 30 years, but it's there. At least it's somewhere in the subconscious. It's somewhere in the back of your mind. So that's the first um, answer to the question, why is it worth it to learn it even if you're not going to remember everything? And I would like to summarize this answer with a famous, uh, at least what I've heard, in the name of the Chazonish. The Chazonish was not very into Dafyomi. He didn't feel that it's really worth it to learn Dafyomi. And the way he expressed himself was that anybody who learns Dafyomi will become an Amaretz in Kolashas. So I say to that, that I'd rather be an Amaretz in all of Shas than a complete Amaretz. So at least I'm not a complete Amaretz. I'm an Amaretz, Amaretz in Shas. Okay, at least I know the concept of Shas. The second answer is based on a parable that they say in the Chafetz Chaim, in the Chafetz Chaim's name. He says, there was once a king who called over two of his servants and he handed them buckets. And he said, I want you to go over to the lake and I want you to fill the buckets up and bring the water over to this big container here and till it, you know, keep on going until it's full. So they started doing their job and they realized that by the time they got to the container, all the water had leaked out. There were holes in the bucket. So one of the servants said, this is ridiculous. This is a complete waste of our time. We're going to keep on going back and forth. There's not going to be any water to put into the container. So what are we doing this for? So he decided to go uh, sit, th sit behind, uh, underneath a tree <coughs> and relax. The other one said, nope, the king told us to do it. That's it. I have to do it. And he went back and forth and back and forth. And he didn't get, he got barely any water into the container. After a few hours, the king comes back and says, okay, what have you done? And, you know, they tell him, each one tells him what they did. And uh, he starts saying to the other guy, why are you sitting under the tree? And he says, well, <laughs> there were holes in the bucket. What was the purpose of bringing water? And it's going to leak anyway by the time we get to the container. And the king said, I asked you to fill up the buckets and walk over to that container and put, put the water in there. My intention was to clean out the buckets. I didn't really care that there was water in the container. I wanted the buckets to be clear, to be clean. You just sat and did nothing. Your friend, he kept on going. His bucket is clean. And the nimshal is, we have a mitzvah to learn Torah. Not all of us have such great memories. Some of us have holes in our heads, okay? Where all the information just spills out and we forget it. But HaKadosh Baruch Hu's intention is to clean out our minds, to clean out our buckets. Hashem wants us to learn a lot of Torah so that we have clean heads, so that we don't have shtuyot in our minds. The fact that we don't remember it, HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave us this kind of head. He gave us this bucket. He knows that we can't possibly remember Kol Hashas, so at least our minds are cleaned. It is simply mind-boggling how many sins and sinful thoughts I have avoided and how much cleansing my mind has undergone because of my goal to finish us. Now the Gemara in Kiddushin, we've learned it with the Shana Bek guys, says at the end of the first parak, Im pagabacha minuval zeh mashcheu lebeit hamidrash. If you meet up with the Yetzirah, 
The only way to get him is to pull him into the base medrash. If you think you're going to beat the Yitzhahara by, by, you know, fighting him on his turf, you're going to lose. The only way to win is to bring him into the base medrash. Or another statement the Chazal say, Barati Yitzhahara u Barati lo Torah Tavlin. I created the Yitzhahara, and I created an antidote to the Yitzhahara, and that is Torah. The only way to beat the Yitzhahara is through Torah. And Mesil Yisharim talks about that in the beginning. He says, Torah mi v'yalidei zihirut. And people who think that they can be zahir, be careful in Torah observance in other ways, are fooling themselves. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the one who created us. He's the one who gave the manual. And the manual is the Torah. And he says, the only way to beat the Yitzhar is through Torah. So, maybe I don't remember all of Shas. But I do know that, Baruch Hashem, I've avoided a lot of sins because of learning Shas. This should give you a little bit of an idea of what I'm talking about. There are approximately 2,750 dafim, dafim in Shas. I tried to chazer the Gemara several times, every, to, every daf I did. On average, I would say I did every daf four times. Some mesechtot, I did it five times. The last mesechtot, because I didn't have enough time, I did only three chazaras. But nonetheless, on average, all of Shas, I did four, every daf four times. And again, that's, that's not really enough. Understand, you know, the famous Gemara that says that you can't compare with someone who does it 100 times to 101 times. Four times is nothing. Four times is the barest minimum to just get something, to really understand the Gemara, and to maybe remember, like I said, the concepts and a little bit, uh, little bit more. Um, so there are 2,750 blot. I did every blot four times. A simple mathematical equation, I would assume it took me around three and a half hours each daf, doing it with the four chazaras. Multiply that by 2,750, you come to almost 10,000 hours of learning Torah. During that time, I was not sinning. I was learning Torah. That, all those 10,000 hours, now 10,000 hours comes to over a year. It's over 13 months straight, of straight learning. 13 months of my life, I wasn't sinning because I was learning. I was learning Shas. That's answer number two. Answer number three. Even if one does not retain all that he learns, there is tremendous value in putting in the effort because of the all-important mitzvah of Talmud Torah. You know, the Chavitz Chaim, in his Sefer Chavitz Chaim, right? Um, if you've learned it, you know in the beginning of the Sefer, before he gets into the laws, he talks about um, all the mitzvot, asay and lotah, say that a person can possibly transgress by, um, by speaking Lashon Hara. So, if you haven't learned it, it's Kedai to learn it. But the one that I always remember, and I always said, I'm going to say this at the Siyum Shas, is, he says as follows, Va'al kulam, besides all the other isurim that you do, by speaking Lashon Hara, Bezehazman, over Bezehazman shall see poor Lashon Hara. When a person is speaking Lashon Hara, he is over al mitzvah asay shall limu Torah. During that time you're speaking Lashon Hara, you could have been learning Torah. Shehi mitzvah gemura, mitzvah asay gemura. It's not like a nice thing to do. It's a mitzvah asay gemura, according to all the post game. It's a mitzvah asay to learn Torah. Ve'en keitz l'schar mitzvah asay zu, shehi shkula kenege kola mitzvah. There is no end to the sachar of learning Torah. It's equal to all the other mitzvot, right? Talmud Torah keneged kulam. Ulehefech, and the opposite, onesh bitula shakul keneged kol avonot. The sin, the punishment of being mevatel Torah is equal to all the other sins. And then he says, a little later on, he quotes the Gra. He says, v'chein ra'iti katu b'shem agra shepireish mahu din v'cheshbon. You know, the Gemara a lot of, uh, a lot of times says, that a teed, you're going to give din v'cheshbon. A person is going to give din v'cheshbon on his sins. What's din and cheshbon? What's the difference between the two? So he says din is the avera itself, right? You get, you're going to be judged because you did an avera. Cheshbon, he says, is the calculation of how much time you wasted from learning Torah when you were doing that avera. Everyone, whenever we do a sin, we're, there's, two, there's two parts to it. There's the sin and there's what we could have been doing instead of that sin. 
And then he says towards the end, Ki be'emet, Bechol teva v'teva shalimura Torah, every word of Talmud Torah, Hu mikayei mitzvat asei b'fnei atzma. It's not like you say, if I learn a dafar, I learn a whole day, so I got a mitzvah to say of learning Torah. Every word that a person lear- learns is a separate mitzvah to say of limu Torah. V'im lo made perak mishnayot or daf gemara, if a person learns a perak of mishnah or a whole daf of gemara, hu mekayim kama meot mitzvot. You have fulfilled several hundred mitzvot, because each word is another mitzvah. Kemo shekatav ha-grazal bishnot el We said that's the gra says. Every word you're mekayim a mitzvah of Talmud Torah. And therefore, he says, How many thousands of words of Torah? Each one being a tremendous mitzvah. When we're speaking Lashon Aru, we mevatel. By speaking Lashon Aru, we mevatel all these mitzvot. So I remember this and I said, wow. Thank God for Bar Ilan CD. They actually have, I was searching and figuring, how am I going to figure this out? How am I going to figure out how many words there are in Shas? Thank God for the Bar Ilan CD. It's just simply a click away. They have everything listed, how many words there are in every one of their, you know, Ma'agarim. There are 1,864,376 words in Shas, Talmud Bavli. I did it four times, every daf at least four times. That comes to 7,457,504 words. I also did Rashi. Every daf, I, did, I was mocking to do Rashi at least twice. Rashi on Shas is 2,350,812 words. Multiply by two is 4,701,624. Altogether, that comes to 12,159,128 words, according to the Gra, each one being a separate mitzvah to say of Talmud Torah, that is Shkula Kenei Kola Mitzvah of the Torah. Now, I'm not trying to brag, like, ah, I did so many mitzvot. <laughs> but, but think about it. We all could use 12 million mitzvot on our side. Couldn't we? Couldn't we? As many of you know, in a few months, I've mentioned to some people, in a few months from now, I'll be in Mirza Hashem making my second Siyum Shas. That's with the Daf Yomi. Because besides we're learn- learning this, I was also, in the last seven years, I've been uh, doing Daf Yomi. What made me join the Daf Yomi? So seven years ago, when I was teaching, actually right before I moved over to Yisori Torah, I was teaching in a different yeshiva, and that's when the Siyum Mashas was, around seven years ago. And there was a guy in my shear, my afternoon shear, who was making a Siyum Shas. Ever since he was about 12 years old, his father had this great idea, you know, for his bar mitzvah, why don't you join me in the Daf Yomi shear? So we went to the Daf Yomi shear. And he ended up keeping up with it from age 12 until he was in yeshiva at age 18 or 19. And he was making a Siyum of Shas. And the yeshiva made a really big suda and a really, re- made a really big deal out of it. Now you have to understand, as I told you before, I've been trying to finish us for a long time. Okay? By then it was uh, almost 20 years. Okay? And here comes this little 19-year-old, and he is making a siyum shas. I was so jealous, even though there's no question about it that he didn't know the Gemara. He was in my shir. He was a good, he, he was good. It was better than most other guys. I mean, he did see, uh, what did we say, 2,750 Bolada Gemara. So he certainly got something from it. But he didn't, I don't think he did Chazara. Whatever it was, he got something out of it. And it was clear, again, that I didn't really have to be jealous of him in terms of he knows more Torah than me. But I had been working so hard to finish Shas. And here it is, this 19-year-old is finishing Shas. Now, I had always said to myself, you know, I have a few more, dopi- a few more smesechto to go. I'm going to finish it up. I tried in the previous cycle before that for the few mesechto that I hadn't done yet to do it with Daf Yomi. And I got through Baba Batra and I got through Zvachim. And then when it came to Menachot, I just didn't have the ability to do it. I didn't have the time to do it. And it was really killing me that this guy, this kid was finishing Shas. So I said to myself, listen, 
What am I going to do? The rest of my life, I'm just going to wait till I finally finish us? I said, no, I'm going to start Dafyomi. And the next day, I started Dafyomi. And I said, okay, so simultaneously, I'm going to try to work on finishing Shas, and I'm also going to start my second Hazara. Why am I telling you this? I didn't make this seum tonight to show off. I did it, hopefully, to make you jealous. Lahagdil Torah ulahadir. To spur you on to learn as much Torah as you possibly can. To push yourselves harder, especially now when you have the time, before life gets really complicated. And it's very important to set goals for yourselves. You can't say, I'll learn when I can, I have a few minutes here, I'll learn a little bit extra. Because you'll never be motivated enough unless you have a goal in mind. And I'm not saying that everybody has to have the goal of finishing Shas. Your goal could be to finish Shas Mishnayos, it could be to finish Tanakh, or anything else that you are capable of doing. Everybody has their own capabilities. You have to have goals, because when you have goals, as you see, okay, it took me 25 years to finish this goal, but I finished it. And it's because I had that goal. And if I had not had that goal, I never would have even come close to finishing. Before I go through the few thank yous, I just want to say a word to my sons that are sitting here. Um, one of the other reasons why I feel very, uh, very happy tonight is because I feel like I fixed a broken chain. I am sure, I don't know, you know, how many generations ago, but I am sure one of my ancestors was a big Talmud Chacham. And I am sure that he finished Shas, and I'm sure that there are probably many, many of my ancestors. It was probably a common thing. Again, Ben Chamesh the Mikra, Ben Esther the Mishma, Ben Shloshes, the Gemara, they probably finished Shas. And I don't know how far back it's been since that hasn't happened. And of course, there are plenty of reasons, you know, the difficulties in Galut and in, in Europe. I'm not, I'm not judging anybody, but the fact is that it's been probably many generations in my family where someone has finished Shas. And I feel like I am being metaking something by the fact that I am finishing, I am fixing this broken chain of Talmidei Chachamim, again, not that I am, but of something, you know, finishing Shas. And I want to say to my sons that maybe we should start our own new chain. Maybe we should start a new family, uh, family minhag, that every son, every boy in our family finishes Shas. How do, what do you say? Can you do it? You're going to do it? Every one of you is capable. Every single one of you is capable. If you start now, you can do it. Don't be like Abba, where it took till he was 47 years old to finish Shas. Do it when you're much younger. Now is the time. Now you have the time to do it. And as I said, let's make a new tradition in our family. The Lichman family, all the boys in the Lichman family are going to finish Shas. Bezrat Hashem. I just want to say a few thank yous. First of all, to my parents who, Baruch Hashem, are here. Um, it's a big schus to have my parents made aliyah, live right next door to us. And um, uh, there's no doubt that, you know, I have a lot of friends and uh, they're not, their goal hasn't been to finish us. And I'm sure it has a lot to do, of course, with the yeshiva I went to and a lot of other things. But it certainly has to do with the upbringing that I had. And that's certainly thanks to my parents. I want to thank my children because the ones who probably suffered most because of this this goal of mine with my children. I was not able to give them the time that I should have given to my children because of the fact that I had this goal to finish us. And I want to ask your forgiveness and hopefully, uh, hopefully you'll forgive me and hopefully you understand that it's for a good reason. My wife, she told me I can't say too much, so I won't, but um, Cole, what is it? Rabbi Akiva said to his students, he said, shalahi, right? Everything that of mine and yours is hers. If she wouldn't let me sit and learn, then I would never have reached this goal. The Gemara says, Nashi b'mayzachi, what, the, what are women zochet olam haba for? And one of the answers is the fact that they push their, their husbands to learn Torah. My chavrutot. Now, I had a lot of chavrusas over the years. Every, and every year when I would you know, be in yeshiva and I would take another student, another guy and say, oh, let's learn this mesecha, let's learn that one, another one that I hadn't done. So I always said, you know, one day I'm going to invite you to my, to my uh, siyum shas, you'll be there. And, you know, that's why I'm taking this video, because uh, hopefully we're going to put it up on the internet and I'm going to try to get in touch with a lot of these people and, you know, 
it's very much uh, in your zechus that I'm able to do this. But there's one very special chavrusa who I didn't only learn one or two mesechta with, I learned several mesechta with, and not only several, but some of the most difficult ones. And that's Rav Yehuda Aronson who's sitting here tonight. And I, there, I can't express my thanks enough for his help. I really never would have been able to do it. When I got to Menachos and I saw that it wasn't going, I wasn't able to do it, uh, so I finally somehow finished it, but then there was Chulin and Bechoros and Erechin and all the difficult Masechtot in, in Seder Kachim that, I mean, thanks to him that he was willing to do it. I mean, if I was him, I would say, no, I want to learn Shabbos, I want to learn uh, you know, Brachos, I want to learn other Masechtot that are more uh, practical. So thank, thank you, Rav uh, Yehuda, for um, doing that. And I just want to point out that he always claims that uh, you know, he has his chus to be learning with me, which I'm not really sure why, but I want to say that it's my chus to, be learning, to have learned with him, and I'll tell you why. Because I might, as I said before, I know a lot of concepts. I know a lot and how to learn Gemara because I've learned a lot of Gemara. Rav Aronson has not learned as much Gemara as I have, and he nonetheless was, we were, we were equal partners in this learning. If he would learn as much Gemara as I, as I did, he would, have been, he would be light years ahead of me. So don't say, don't say uh, that, that uh, it's your zechus, it's my zechus. And finally, of course, um, thank you to Hashem. We're going to say in a few minutes, uh, we're going to say the Hadrons, and uh, probably the most important line is, Shalom Samta Chalkim Yoshvei Kronot. Baruch Hashem that you have given me the zechut to be one of the Yoshvei Beit HaMidrash. One of the people has the schut, and it's a tremendous schut, to be able to learn, to be able to sit in a base medrash, and not to be one of these people who waste their lives away. That's what Yoshvei Kronot means. People will sit on this, the, the, in the streets and, and schmooze and do other things that are not important. Uh, that, for that, I have only Hashem to thank. The last Masechet I did is Masechet Nida, which is the last Masechet in Shas. But I actually didn't do it in order because actually 20 years ago uh, when I was in uh, YU, I was in Rav Shechter's Kolel and we did, I did more than half of the Masechet. But I always had a few blot, about 30 blot that I had to finish, which is what I finished. And therefore the last parak is, uh, the last parak that I did is the seventh parak and not the end of the Gemara. So just read the last line. By the way, this just reminds me of another very important thing I once read in the name of the Chatam Sofer, who said that if you've done part of a Masechet, you know what, happen, what ends up happening if you didn't finish it. So you say to yourself, five years later, I don't remember a word, I've got to start from scratch. He says, no, start from where you left off. Start from where you left off. So 20 years ago, I did most of Masechet Nida, and I started from where I left off. And that's why I was able to finish it. So the last line in the seventh parak says, I'm not going to explain it because it's too complicated, Ze'aklal, the, the Mishnah at the end had said, Davar shechashudimbo einem animalav, that anybody who is chashud, who is a suspect of doing a specific thing, is not believed about, to, to testify about things. Ze'aklal la'tuyeh mai, says the Gemara, la'tuyeh tchumin v'yayin nesech. That um, uh, the kutim, specifically the kutim, see, they, they don't believe in tchumin or yayin nesech, so therefore, they're not believed to testify about it. Hajjun Allah Dama Nida, Hajjun Allah Dama Nida, Hajjun Allah Dama Nida. And then, I'll just read the last line of the Masechet also, because it's very apropos. The Masechet ends with a famous, it's at the end of a lot of Masechetot. Tana de Be'elio, Kol HaShoneh Halachot B'chol Yom Muvtach Lo Shehu Ben Olaba. That's what we spoke about. Anyone who learns Halacha every single day, is guaranteed a place in Olam Haba, Shene'amar Halichot Olam Lo, Al Tikrei Halichot, Ela Halachot. Hajjan Allah, Masechet Nida, Hajjan Allah, Tinoket, Veslik Allah, Masechet Nida. Hajjan Allah, Masechet Nida, Vitalmud Bavli, Vahajra Halan. Da'atan Allah, Masechet Nida, Vitalmud Bavli, Vida'ata Halan, Loti Nit Nashe Minach, Masechet Nida, Vitalmud Bavli, Loti Nashe Minan, Lo Balma Aden, Velo Balma Da'ati. Hajjan Allah Masech Nida Vatalmud Bavli Vidajra Halan. Datan Allah Masech Nida Vatalmud Bavli Vidata Halan. Lonit Nashemi Nach Masech Nida Vatalmud Bavli Lotit Nashemi Nan. Loba Alma Hadem Loba Alma Daati. Hajjan Allah Masech Nida Vatalmud Bavli Vidajra Halan. Datan Allah Masech Nida Vatalmud Bavli Vidata Halan. 
לא נתנשא מנח מסכת נידה ותלמוד בבלי, ולא תתנשא מנן, ולא בעלמא הדם ולא בעלמא דעתי. יהי רצון מלפניך אדוני אלוהינו ואלוהי אבותינו שתהא תורתך ואומנותנו בעולם הזה ותהא אימון עולם הבא. חנינה בר פאפה, רמי בר פאפה, נחום בר פאפה, אחי בר פאפה, אבא מרי בר פאפה, רפן בר פאפה, רכיש בר פאפה, סורכה בר פאפה, עדה בר פאפה, דרו בר פאפה. הרב נא אדוני אלוהינו דברי תורתך בפינו ובפביעות עמך בית ישראל ונהיה כולנו אנחנו וצאצאינו וצאצאי עמך בית ישראל כולם יהודי שמך ולומדי תורתך לשמה מאויבי תחק מני למצוותיך כי לעולם היא לי יהי ליבי תמים בחוקיך למען לא אבוש לעולם לא אשכח פיקודיך חיבם חייתני ברוך אתה אדוני למדיני חוקיך אמן 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 צל ועד מודים אנחנו לפניך אדוני אלוהינו ואלוהי אבותינו ששמת חלקנו מיושבי בית המדרש ולא שמת חלקנו מיושבי קרנות שאנו משכימים והם משכימים, אנו משכימים לדברי תורה והם משכימים לדברים בטלים, אנו עמלים והם עמלים, אנו עמלים ומקבלים שכר והם עמלים ואינם מקבלים שכר, אנו רצים והם רצים, אנו רצים לחיי עולם הבא והם רצים לבאר שחת שנאמר ואתה אלוהים תורידם לי באר שחת אנשי דמים ומרמה לא יחצו ימיהם ואני אבטח בך יהי רצון לפניך אדוני אלוהי כשם שעזרתני נשאים מסכת נידה ותלמוד בבלי כך תעזרני להתחיל מסכתות וספרים אחרים לסיימם ללמוד ולמד, לשמור ולעשות ולקיים את כל דברי תלמוד תורתך באהבה. וזכות כל התנאים והמוראים ותלמידי חכמים יעמוד לי לזרי, שלא תמוש התורה מפי, מפי זרי וזרע זרי עד עולם. ותתקיים בי ויתהלכך, תנחה אותך בשכבך, תשמור עליך, והקיצו תהי תשיחך, כי הביא ירבו ימיך ויוסיפו לך שנות חיים, אורך ימים בימינם, בשמאלה, אושר וכבוד, אדוני עוז לעמו ייתן, אדוני יברך את עמו בשלום. Closed. בגלה ובזמן קריב ואמרו אמן. יש מרבה מבורך לעולם ולעולמי יום היה יתברך וישתבח ויתפאר ויתרומם ויתנשא ויתהדר ויתעלה ויתהלה על שמי דקודשה בריחו לעילה מן כל ברכתה ושירתה תושבחתה ונחמתה דמירם בעלמא ואמרו אמן על ישראל ועל רבנן ועל תלמידי יום ועל כל תלמידי תלמידי יום ועל כל מאן דעסקים באורייתא דיבטרא קדישא הדם ודיבחל אתר ואתר יהי להון ולכון שלמה רבה חי נבכי סברה חמין וחי נריכין ומזורני רביכי ופורקנה מן קדם אבונדי בשמיה ורב אמרו אמן יהי שלמה רבה מן שמיה וחיים עלינו ועל כל ישראל ואמרו אמן עושה שלום במרומיו ויעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל ואמרו אמן
ש"ס.